I ride at 10.30 and sauntered along like a tall. I walked down the street. I, I, I'm here. <laughs> Thanks very much. I expect it more, but I'm satisfied. Now, me, you don't know what to wear this weather, do you, lady? It's raining again, ducky. You all right? It, it's a typically plaintive moment with the disarming couple who must now be among the most imitated stars of that year. I'm subject to colds and they make me quite deaf and then I can't hear what you say. A fellow once asked me if I'd have a drink and I heard that with a cold, by the way. As we drank, we got... The Redditch Indicator, Saturday, August the 2nd, 1913. For many years it has been a subject of complaint among the public of Redditch and District that they have been inadequately and unsatisfactorily served in the matter of entertainments. The chief trouble, of course, being that the town possessed no hall which could said to be specifically constructed for and properly adapted to theatrical performances. With the opening of the Redditch Palace, Ulster Street, on Monday next, 4th instant, the reproach and cause of complaint will be removed and the local public will then have an opportunity of showing that they were in earnest in their complaints and that they appreciate the efforts of those who thus meet their wishes and needs. The Palace Theatre will open for its first performance at 3pm on Monday next, Bank Holiday. The evening performances are at 7 and 9pm and these times are fixed for all future evening performances. There will be an entire change of programme twice weekly, Monday and Thursdays. So the start of a Redditch institution was announced to the world in the local paper. The Palace Theatre first opened its doors in August 1913, a comparative latecomer in the wave of new theatre building in which public demand for entertainment had been finding expression since the beginning of the century. Prior to the building of the Palace Theatre, entertainment had been provided at the Public Hall in Church Road, a 600 plush lift-up seats venue with improved heating and lighting, before it became a Bosco's picture house in August 1913. Shown here in a photograph taken in 1907 with advertising for J and A Millwood was the original shop on the site next to which the theatre was to be built, where the cottages once stood. The building opposite where Apollo now stands was the old Liberal Club at the end of Grove Street. The company that built the palace was G.C. Hewins and Company. A photograph taken outside the palace in 1913 shows the workers who built the theatre and on the extreme left is the foreman, Mr. Simmons. Described as a miniature opera house of classic design and seating, at that time 660, it boasted every modern facility of the day. The auditorium was built on two levels, with stalls and the pit and one balcony, with one large box on either side. This reflected the social divisions of the day, with prices set according to seating, comfort and positions. Mr H. Cage Hales, a pottery entrepreneur, was the managing director of the company, the Redditch Palace Limited, and it appears that the cost of the building of the theatre, which was cited as £9,000, may have been raised by private subscription. The theatre architect chosen by Mr Hales was a leading exponent of theatre design, Mr Bertie Crewe. Crewe, one of the most dynamic architects of the 1890s to 1900s, specialised entirely in theatres and, subsequently, cinemas. By the time he came to design the palace, he had been involved in over 40 theatre building projects and was at the height of his architectural powers. Margaret Simmons, 
granddaughter of William Henry Simmons, who was foreman of works during the theatre's construction, very kindly presented an historic gift to the Palace Theatre following the 2006 restoration. It is a letter from Bertie Crewe thanking the builders for their first-class work on a small but difficult job. Until 1929, the Palace Theatre used to be a cine variety house, which meant that it combined films and variety entertainment on the bill, with the programme changing twice weekly. There was a mixture of comedy, drama, musicals, reviews, panto, opera and Shakespeare plays. This included films, as well as live acts performed during the intervals. Acts like Mr Horace Layton and Miss Pansy Linford in the Teeth Trapeze and Dancing Act, and Mr William Kingsley on Handbells. There was even a performing elephant on one occasion, the understage being reinforced with pit props to take the weight. Tickets were sixpence for the pit, ninepence for the upper circle, one shilling for the stalls, one and six for the dress circle, and up to ten and six for the two boxes, which each held five people. But in February 1929, it was being advertised as Palace Super Cinema, reducing the number of live performances in its programming. In April 1930, a Western Electric sound system was installed and ticket prices were raised due to the cost of installing the new Torquay apparatus. At the end of 1937, the owning company, the Redditch Palace Limited, leased the building to two partners who changed the policy from films to live shows, mostly twice nightly variety. In 1939, at the beginning of the war, the palace closed, in common with other places of entertainment elsewhere, but by 1940 was fully in operation. Films continued throughout the war, with occasional visits by a forces concert party. Before the war ended, Elsie Siddle Downing had founded her school of dancing and started a series of pantomimes and reviews. In the late 1940s, films took a back seat at the palace. Jack Lutey took over the management of the building in 1948. He brought in repertory theatre with regular plays. Actress Felicity Kendall began her stage career at the palace. She played Puck when her father, Geoffrey, brought the Shakespeare International Theatre Company to the palace during this period. In 1952, a new owner took over, but by 1954 the lack of artists, good touring shows and rising costs, coupled with the start of transmission of BBC television from Sutton Coalfield and the ease of purchase of television sets, all conspired against the independent theatre operator. So much so that on the 19th of March 1954, the indicator ran a report, Can the Palace be kept open? A new low had been reached when an audience of four people assembled for a performance of A Christmas Carol. Even trying the nude and fans acts failed to attract audiences, and in May 1954 came the shock announcement, Palace to close down. Councillor J.R. Wilkinson, the owner, stating to the indicator, The town has lost interest. I cannot afford to stay open. On the 21st of February 1955, the palace reopened as a roller skating rink. The raked stall's floor had gone and the stage and auditorium altered to suit this new form of public entertainment, with the former stall's floor raised to stage level. A cafe was built into the wing space. Four years later, in 1959, the palace changed its use yet again and opened as a dance hall. Still in the Teddy Boys era, some of the original interior lights went missing on evenings of unseemly behaviour. Renamed the new Palace Dance Hall, it led a life of mixed use, which not only included dancing, but also wrestling and roller skating, and in the late 1960s, it was also being used as a bingo hall. By 1967, the palace was described by the newly formed Redditch Development Corporation as shabby, dirty and dilapidated, and it bought the palace and handed it over to Redditch Urban District Council. 
By 1970, the fate of the palace was more or less settled. Multi-entertainment centres were now being thought of in other areas, and with Redditch being a developing new town, it was decided to refit the palace for theatrical use once again. Barleys were the builders chosen for the job, and in 1970 palace building project came just in time to save them from going broke. The picture here shows the original biograph or projection box holes originally in the centre at the rear of the circle and used in the days when it was a cinema. They were discovered when the old shop was demolished ready for the new build. The 1970s rebuild changed the dynamics of the theatre. It was refurbished with a three-storey extension built to the right of the original front with a new entrance around the corner on Grove Street. Having lost its original front entrance on Ulster Street, the theatre became isolated. Opposite the new entrance on Grove Street, the old shops and houses had been demolished and derelict ground left empty and run down. At the back of the theatre, where the surgical needle factory of Shrimpton and Fletcher's was demolished, it became an unsurfaced car park and wasteland for years and known locally as the bomb site. The only original part left of the old factory at the rear of the theatre now became dressing rooms. Administration offices were put where the old dressing rooms had once been on the top floor facing out onto Ulster Street. The refurbished Palace Theatre was reopened on the 11th of September 1971 when Sir Edward Thompson handed over the building as a gift to the people of Redditch. The opening ceremony was carried out by Mr Peter Walker, MP, the Secretary of State for the Environment and MP for Worcester. The first show was called Between the Bars, featuring that master musician Donald Swan. Still retaining the palace name, it became a multi-purpose venue, mainly used by amateurs with occasional professional tours. Seats in the stalls were now stackable, allowing for many uses of the floor area. In 1975, a buyer seat campaign was launched to put fixed seats back into the auditorium and the stalls were fitted out with new seats. The original seating had remained in the dress circle throughout the theatre's many transitions, although in the rebuild it had acquired a central aisle which reduced the number of seats to 399. In 1979, a new workshop was added to the building where the old cafe had been. In 1982, a private theatre group took the theatre over under the title of the Mercian Theatre and Arts Federation, but a report in the Indicator and Chronicle in April summed it up after only 60 people turned up to see a concert. Just five of them were from Redditch. The fate of the Redditch Palace is in the hands of the audience. The Redditch Borough Council took over the management and running of the building in 1985 and continued a tradition of providing a wide mix of entertainment to please every palate. The theatre remained open and was kept going mainly due to the efforts of local volunteers and amateur companies and operatic societies who not only carried out front of house duties but also kept the theatre clean as well. Audience numbers grew from 21,000 in 1997 to over 43,000 by 2004. The future of the palace was assured and in 2005 a major restoration took place. Funds and grants were provided by Redditch Borough Council, £3 million, and over £900,000 came from the Heritage Lottery Fund as part of a £4 million scheme. No pictures remained of the original interior and Crewe's original plans for the palace were burnt by his business partner in his back garden after Crewe died, as no one wished to take over Crewe's archive of work. Historical theatre consultant David Wilmore from Theatre Search researched the historical background of the building and its architect Bertie Crewe. Following this research, based on Crewe's style, Evidence found, such as seating designs, some old plaster work and exterior photographs, as well as a public consultation to ask what people involved with the theatre wish to see, architect Samson Hall, based in Milton Keynes, 
produced a scheme that centred on the detailed restoration of Bertie Crewe's 1913 theatre, combined with a new three-storey building to replace the existing 1970s facilities. Had it not been registered with English Heritage in 1996, when it became a Grade II listed building and protected, we may have lost what was left of Bertie Crewe's original theatre. The new glass façade reinstated entrances on both Grove Street and Ulster Street to open up the theatre once again. It also reinstated where the lamps were on Ulster Street side. Bertie Crewe had put in four to light up the area and welcome people in. The original stained glass in the theatre was also Bertie Crewe's idea for showing lights onto the street and people inside enjoying themselves. The new build, costing some £4 million, had over 60 contractors involved. A lot of planning and thought went into creating a modern frontage and facilities, including wheelchair spaces, a lift to all levels, bar, lounge and studio, the room upstairs. But as you enter the main auditorium, you are transported back to the original vision Bertie Crewe had created. Well, almost. The new colour scheme is cream, gold and burgundy. All the seating has been refurbished and luxurious new curtaining festoons the boxes and brand new front of house curtains finish off the effect. Other crucial historical details include oak panelling at the back of both stalls and circle designed to help retain the atmosphere for the audiences on the back rows as well as the replacement of seats in the centre of the circle which had been replaced in the 1970s with a central audience aisle. The theatre seating capacity was increased from 399 to 425. There are 10 wheelchair spaces in the auditorium, 8 in the stalls and 2 in the circle. Toilets for disabled patrons are available on all levels of the theatre. There is an induction loop system in the auditorium and box office areas for the use of hearing impaired patrons. The theatre's chandelier and stained glass embellishments to its rose bowl above were also reinstated, as well as recreating the grand entrance into the stalls. Crewe's original interior had been retained, making it a lovely, intimate theatre. After the refit, Redditch's historic Edwardian Theatre opened its doors to the public with a feast of fabulous entertainment. The first major production after reopening was the 2006 Christmas family pantomime Peter Pan, produced by Paul Holman Associates and starring David Griffin. In 1914, there were over 1,200 working theatres in the British Isles. In 1982, Curtains, or A New Life for Old Theatres, estimated that 85% of these had either been demolished or irretrievably altered. More than 30 years later, the statistics are unquestionably worse. Theatres designed by Bertie Crewe and remaining largely untouched are now extremely rare. As one of only six working theatres left in the country that can be wholly attributed to its famous architect Bertie Crewe, its heritage and pedigree makes the Grade II listed palace, architecturally, a theatre of national importance, as it is a rare example of Edwardian theatre architecture standing at an architectural crossroads at a time when theatre construction was starting to decline and cinema construction was just beginning. The building is one of the few remaining historic buildings in Redditch and therefore has great importance for the town's residents. If you're looking for the best regional entertainment around, look no further than the Palace Theatre Redditch. With a family orientated programme featuring the very best in drama, comedy, variety, musicals, classical, folk, pop and the big band sound, as well as opera, ballet, pantomime and children's shows, you can rest assured that there is something to suit every taste both in the main auditorium as well as a new look and fully functioning studio space, the room upstairs, with a seating capacity of 70. The Palace Theatre staff and volunteers very much look forward to welcoming you to the little theatre packed with big entertainment. And as we enter our second century, let's all make sure that the Palace Theatre continues to thrive and that it is still with us in 2113. 
And what about that resident ghost? Well, all theatres have one, don't they? No one to walk with all by myself. No one to talk with while I'm happy on the shelf. Ain't misbehaving, I'm saving my love for you. The one I love, I'm too reflecting, it's just a new love in love. And this behaving, I'm saving my love for you. Yeah. 
Naughty Indian Kelly. 